The world is changing. 51 years ago, the War of the Wilds came to a stalemate. The people of the Grainor Peninsula set all plant life ablaze to stop the stranglehold and built a mighty wall to keep the wilds at bay. All the while, they sat atop their monument, never truly knowing why this all began. A likeness of peace blanketed the blasted lands. One year ago, it all changed. An ancient god, once bound by old magic, found himself free and took his vengeance as his shackles were shattered. The mountainous city of Bulwark paid a grave price, but in the wake of this destruction comes the first glimpses of the possibility for true and honest peace. Our heroes venture from their familiar homeland into the fullness of what their world was before the war, a world they've touched but never truly seen. They find themselves caught between a land that has tried to end their lives hundreds of times over and a country they helped decimate. Under the canopy, they seek glory, truth, and salvation. The world is changing, and their hands will guide it. Hello, and welcome back to Another Path. My name is Chase, and I continue to be your GM. Today, our heroes delve beneath the wilds to recover the power of a fallen god. Thank you to our backers Carlin, Aton, and Everett for their continued support. With that, sit back, relax, and enjoy your trip down another path. Yeah. So, Chase, I'm I'm, I'm running into a predicament. Mm. There's just so many fantastic more options at tpublic.com for fantastic Ghostlight Media merch. Really just coming I, out hot with this merch plug, huh? It's yeah. a good plug. I like it. It's a good plug, and also, you're not wrong. <laughs> there are precious few articles of clothing that I regularly receive compliments on. One of them is my Telepathic Bears t-shirt, which got multiple nods at Gen Con and one rando nod at a karaoke a couple of weeks ago. Oh, that's, yeah. That seems about right, though. Right. There's somebody and, at karaoke that's like, yeah, man, <laughs> bears with brains in yeah. my brain. Oh, so yeah. Mm-hmm. Ooh, sorry. Go, go I, 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 so we have this guy that we work with at the Bread Mines by the name of Tim. What's up, Tim? Mm-hmm. How you doing, Tim? Tim is good people. Tim just got married. Uh, happy nuptials, Tim. Happy nuptials, my friends. Happy nuptials. I'm pretty sure Tim knows this show better than all of us. It's likely. Uh-oh. There was yeah. a moment where I'm sitting there and like I'm prepping stuff in the morning. And, like, Tim's next to me because he, like, does, like, a lot of, like, the actual, like, food prep in the mornings. Mm-hmm. Sure. And I don't remember how we got in the conversation. We were talking about drug bugs, too. We were talking about doing uh, drug quests, too. And he's like, yeah, you guys do have some drug bugs still. I was like, he's like, Jax is carrying those still. It's like, they, he is, Tim. And then, <laughs> right. And Thanks, then I was like, Tim. but, but, Griffin, would that work? He's like, yeah, you guys don't have carry anymore. And I was like, well, you're right, you Tim. Don't, Tim. <laughs> 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 oh uh, boy tim's great you know what that means though it's just that master b has to go with us yeah no oh, I, no master b's our uh watchdog i mean yeah but he's the only somebody one that has, has to... a pact with carrie right now <laughs> somebody has to make sure we don't go on a bad drug trip a bad you're having a bad trip a bad trip that'll be goat mordecai yeah. <laughs> soon he won't be a dog anymore he'll be a goat <laughs> But anyway, shout out to Tim. Tim, <laughs> Tim, what's up, Tim? What's up, Tim? What up, Tim? I have not met you, Tim. You sound like good people. Oh, Tim's um, great. Now, I do want to say, as uh, I'm going to describe myself as a learned pizza man. A pizza heir. A pizza heir, if you will. Mm, if you that's will. true. Um, P- an Prince heir to of Zah. A, uh, Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I have... <laughs> <laughs> fucking got me with that oh, one, man. Prince of Zah. I have seen and attempted many things that would lightly be called pizza crime. <laughs> uh, and an Good. elephant ear pizza is one of them. How was that functionally different from Cinestix? Well, because I mean, it's, it's like, a, like a dessert pizza. But there's marinara sauce on it. Oh, oh no! no! Ryan, you criminal! Yeah, there was, it was elephant ear and the cinnamon was oh. in the dough. And then you, Woof. we built it like a regular pizza because we were like, hey, let's see what it tastes like. <sighs> okay. I'm going a friend named Jacob when I say that's mad yucky, bro. That's mad yucky. It's real bad. It was real bad. Oh, gross. You were, it was real bad. Because honestly, you were 
before you added the marinara, you were on to something like mixing it into the dough. That's inspired. Yeah, yeah you mix it into that's the dough. Something. And if you just do it with, like, you could get, like, you could get some meats on there. Like, you could get yeah. some pepperoni or some salami See, or maybe, like, like, maybe even, like, a Hawaiian with some cinnamon on it. Like, that That wouldn't be bad. See, I, I think, bad. like, instead, go dessert route. Get some, like, you know, maybe some, like, apple pie filling. Mm -hmm. You know, like, spread that. Do, like, some, like, nice, like, a cream drizzle. Mm -hmm. Maybe a little splash of more cinnamon on top. So you can yes. do, like, you can do, like, the peanut butter and jelly one. Ooh. And there's cinnamon in that. Um, that's that a, that's a hit, especially the strawberry one. That's pretty good. Mm, or you can good. do, you can actually make, like, cinnamon sticks, but you use, like, a garlic buttery spread to with all the cinnamon and everything. That's pretty good yeah. stuff. You ever had yeah, peanut butter and honey together? It's delicious. Yeah, dog. Dude. Like, I'm real hungry now. This is what we've accomplished. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mad hungry. And Mad uh, hungry. we haven't even started yet. Next time, um, remind us and Zach and I can go on about a 10 minute long uh, cookie tangent. Oh, um, man. <laughs> it's been a while since we've gotten some jar talk. Yeah. That's because we haven't worked there in about a year and a half or more. Longer. All right. New, Me, new Patreon goal. You, you two go back and work at the jar for a day and record whatever it is that you talk about in that time. Und <laughs> undercover cookie cops. It will be, it'll be the, the first real recording of the fake podcast we came up with before this even happened, uh, where we just hung a mic in front of where we would scoop dough and it was just called the scoop. The scoop yes i hate we'll do an it. actual recording of the scoop yeah. that'll be patreon the I, scoop would be a web show Ooh, that could also be mm. good because we would put a camera there so we could watch you well the, yeah, the problem is is there's like a there's like a shelf thing and you can't there's not good sight lines you know you'd have to get a new table in there we could we could figure it out i we can drill a hole in the wall there you go we mm -hmm. can commit some jar crimes <laughs> jar crimes a cold early winter night settles in around the ever after as you finish your conversation. Set in your choice to delve into Amare Dejani's temple upon the morrow, you fill yourself with food and drink before drifting off to bed. Does anybody have anything they would like to do before the next morning? Normal nightly rituals, you know, <laughs> the, a lot of intricate uh, a ring twirling. Absolutely. And the... Uh, uh, oh, like, okay. Not like... <laughs> Like juggling on plates or anything, ring twirling. Not like no, advanced he's not hula hooping thing. in the middle. No, of you bar. know, I, I I turn it and things happen. And, now and, I understand. And then that my weird deity is appeased. Yes, uh, you feel the warm and healthy, and at the same time distant glow of uh, the deep as uh, you check in for the evening with her. Griffin, anything spe uh, specific Mordecai wanted to do? Um. I think he's pretty content. He's in a pretty content place and now has like a, a job in front of him, so he's pretty focused. Jackson. I'm going to go outside into the night and I'll just find like a, a nice little corner of town, a park or something that's a little bit more open. And mm -hmm. I will sit down and pull out my scroll and write to Addy. Dear Addy. Sliding down banisters on books sounds like a great time. And if you or someone gets hurt, well, I can fix that now. Magic is pretty neat. I'm learning so much about life on this side of the wall, and it's wildly different. But somehow it's still very much the same. There's all sorts of new things over here. We're riding these giant bat horses that fly through trees... Mordecai really loves it. We've been to two cities so far. Well, more like big towns. Sangye and Clove. And they're pronounced differently. I'm, I'm learning. I'm trying to be a better man. Evidently, the barriers to patron realms are thin out here. We've seen more darklings from the Fae, and maybe I'll get to see Gaia again. We visited another patron, Luck, and we are going now to this really old mine. We think some of Amarea's lost relics are down there, and he's kind of the whole reason we're over here. Wish you were over here. XOXO, Jackson. And I will uh, get up and 
head back and catch my tight four before getting up in the morning. The night passes uneventfully. Uh, Jackson, you probably rolled downstairs right around three or four in the morning. Fax is down there and is only momentarily surprised to see anybody up and down here, but she waves you on over and uh, invites you to have a plate of bacon and eggs and uh, a good morning ale. Morning. Where's the coffee? I need some <coughs> coffee. <coughs> Please. Yeah, all right. Fine. Oh, is that ale's better? That's great. I will take that. This is going to be a long day. Thank you very much. <laughs> How's the feeling you might feel that way? I'll sit down and start to eat. Is she eating with me? Uh, she she grabs herself a plate while she uh when she hands you uh yours. All right. So in, in between bites, I'll just make mm-hmm. some small talk. And so, if Chiron moves her all around the place and picks people up and such, do you stay here? or Do you do some of that too? Oh no, that's not for me. No, that's that's his little. That's what he does to make ends meet and to keep us in the good graces of the uh, of the clerics out in Lee. It's good to have some folks uh, in touch with them from time to time. I can imagine. Haven't needed their help yet. Sure. But they're powerful folk. Even out here, we got to play the game from time to time. Yeah. The, wait, game? You mean like politics or that one? Yes. Oh, yeah. King's game. See, that's the kind of thing I like about these towns that are kind of out a little farther. On like either side of the wall, it's uh, easier, a little simpler. You don't have I... to feel like you're looking over your shoulder every three seconds. Same here. Uh, Mom told me uh, where she's from, it was a lot of turmoil from time to time. So she would just, you know, she packed up and moved down here and crossed the line and made her home. So is there anyone actually in charge here in town, or you just all kind of make things work? A little bit of both. Uh, as uh, it, it fades in and out, but uh, depending on uh, what the needs of the town are, we may pledge a level of fealty to some of the folks that uh, have the scratch to get things done. Ah. Out this far, it's it's all about resources and who has them, but... Right here, right now, the resource, at least for us, is a warm place to sit, eat, and drink, and have a conversation, and have the influence and know-how to get the supplies we need. Well, speaking of supplies, we're going to go check out the mine Mm. before we get going. We heard that there might be something down there that we need to get, but is is there just the one? What do they mine down there? Gold and coal. Okay. Yeah, you talk about Orem's mine, right? Oh, are there more than one? I... Oh, yeah. Oh, oh boy. Oh, boy. I... And Jackson Don't opens worry. the thing and starts taking notes. <laughs> Go to coal mine, comma, gold, question you're, mark? You're, you're going to head south. Okay. And you're going to go to a hill, and it's on. It's a lonely little shack on top of a hill. You can't miss it. Aren't mines... Sorry. Aren't mines usually under the hill? It goes down under the hill. Oh, so we're going inside. into the shack, and then there's some steps yes. or a series of pulleys that could be confused for an elevator. Perhaps. Okay. Uh, I've only been in there once or twice, but uh, it's uh, it's easy enough to find. It's very strange, because most of them, you're right, most of them, you actually do enter from the side of a hill and go you know, into some of the larger like mountainous areas out towards the uh, other side of town, but this one... There's no reason for it to be where it is. Uh, they got very lucky trying to find it. Oh, that works out nicely. Mm. So we got to go up to go down. Up is down. Up is down. Correct. All right. That makes sense. Kind of. This is delicious. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Time passes and you two continue to have a lovely conversation as the sun rises and eventually the rest of your companions. Yes, Griffin. When we departed with Atticus and the Brotherhood, I forget. Did they tell us where they were going? Vaguely north. Okay. But they didn't give any specific directions as to how far or how long they were going to be up there. Okay. Um, and we've gone southwest? Yeah. Yes. Ish? Okay. Ish. Okay. I had something I wanted to do, and maybe I'll still do it, and maybe you'll allow it. Um, 
when I get up in the morning, mm-hmm. I want to um, take some take some of my after I finish breakfast, I'm gonna take a little scrap of my breakfast that's left mm-hmm. and head outside and try to uh, rustle up a friendly bird. Okay. Just to feed a bird some breakfast. You know, if you feed if you feed a bird some breakfast, it's gonna want a letter. Ho- hopefully, if I feed a bird some breakfast, it's gonna do a job for me. So yeah, that is the plan. <laughs> okay, you go outside, you take a piece of bread, and uh, you contract a bird. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm going to cast uh, animal messenger as a ritual, sending it northward, looking for Atticus or any member of the Brotherhood that I know. Absolutely. Um, and I can deliver kind of a la sending a short message. Certainly. And I want to say, Atticus, it's Mordecai. It occurred to me, I might want to be able to track you down in the future. You know we're heading to Lee. If you don't mind me asking, where are y'all headed in case I want to get in touch later? Okay, thanks, bye. Okay. And the bird has about 50 miles that it can traverse before the spell ends, Mm -hmm. per the spell. So maybe I get lucky. Um... But I I uh, scratch the bird under the chin and give it a little bit extra food and release it into the sky dramatically. This robin, I have decided, looks at you quizzically as you just, like, thrust your hands upward and then it takes off. <laughs> it doesn't go. It just sits in my hands for a second. <laughs> for a moment, it's like, the fuck, man? <laughs> Don't throw a living thing. Oops, <laughs> Sorry. I'm learning. I've never used this spell before. Ta. Yeah, I know. Bye. Um, and it flutters off towards the north. Now, for those at home wondering why I didn't just use the tiny pony, it's because I'm saving that for emergencies this time and not using it for party tricks. Good job. <laughs> Look, we're learning. And I'm using the spell that I've had forever because I'm a totem spirit barbarian. Mm. That's fair. Anyway. That's a good use of that. Yeah. Yeah. I was like, I could pony to him, but the last time I did that, I fucked up real bad. So. <laughs> <laughs> we had to use Rogar as a, like, uh, weird transitive property communication device. Yeah. <laughs> also, mentally, third, third favorite, favorite band. Bands. Yes. Yes, it is. But, um, all right. And uh, Zephyr, was there anything you wanted to do in the morning before you take off? Um, I think Zephyr gets up a little early. Um, I feel like back when. Um, Rolling with the final flight, uh, cause Joe used axes, yes? Absolutely. I feel like in pr- Absolutely. Nah. Uh, Zephyr, I feel like, uh, since rolling with them has also been carrying like a hand axe with them and sort of picked up some stuff from Joe. And so as I'm just sort of practicing a bit with that. Yeah, it's a good warlock, uh, off weapon there. You grab your axe and you head outside. Um, there are trees everywhere for you to do like little oh i'm not gonna chop on a tree i don't want to get killed that's fair (laughs) that's that's important yeah yeah that's yeah oh no if i if i find like a post or like something like that like i'm not like digging it in but just like hay bale okay um for funsies give me a a real quick um um investigation check oh nice uh 21 18 plus three okay uh, before you go and start chopping on random posts, uh, you take a quick walk around the area and you're able to find what can only be a rudimentary barracks. Uh, it's small, one story. From the outside, it looks to be maybe one or two large rooms, but you're not really peeking a whole lot in the windows. But what you see outside is a whole bunch of training dummies and targets. Oh, rad. Yeah, I, I, I'm like about to like crack into like a post and like I'm like, oh shit, why don't I just go use this? <laughs> yep. Um, that's early enough that nobody's really out there. Yeah, I know. I have, like, the jacket uh, off and, like, the sleeves rolled up. Uh, and, yeah, mm. just, just giving this training dummy what it's a for. a working man's dragon. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You all reconvene at uh, the Ever After and exit together from the Heart of Clothe to the south, following the directions to the vine that Fax gave Jackson uh, just a few hours ago. Last night's snowfall blanketed the ground in a gentle powder, causing your feet to crunch satisfyingly down the haphazard paths between the chaos of buildings, trees, and open farmland. 
Passing by homes, you see the unexpected, yet familiar sights. Red curtains are hung in the windows. The scent of spiced bread wafts from chimneys. And pillar candles prominent in windows and gardens. It has not occurred to you, but Candle Nights is coming. Oh, man. And the spirit is alive and well in the wild. It's Candle Nights. Nice. Shit. It's Candle Nights. It's Candle Nights. It's Candle Nights. You walk for an hour in the lazily falling snow to the hill where you were directed to. A modest shack sits atop the hill, being guarded by a single, massive half-orc. I, I can handle this if you'd like. Um, we didn't really get any sort of, like, documentation or anything from Orem, right? Or maybe he just kind of relayed that along, That's hopefully. what I'm hoping for, yes. Um, <laughs> okay. I, I, I think maybe we avoid the topic of... This guy is a god. Oh and, no, most and definitely. This is, I just that seems that like a wise choice. We are here to reclaim his sentence. mine and his magical objects, and this is just our pal Johnny. Yeah, Johnny. Johnny. Hey, I'm Johnny. <laughs> Johnny. <laughs> Sorry, it will always sound weird you saying that, my friend. Yeah. I don't know why. It's a perfectly reasonable name. I'm Johnny. No, I know, but you saying it in particular, because we know who you are. <laughs> All right, well, um, it's fair. Let's, uh, let us do this. Let's go. You walk up to the uh, to this half-orc, and he is probably a solid seven feet tall. He's a big dude. Well, rippling muscles, and he just kind of looks down at you. <laughs> so. Why, hello there, friend. <laughs> um, <laughs> it is uh, good to make your acquaintance. Um, uh, Mr. Orum has sent us to um, uh, do some uh, investigating into this here uh, chamber mine. I'm not quite sure what will lie It's down a there. coal mine. A, yes, a coal mine. Thank you. You're welcome. I don't, you're right behind me, Jackson. <laughs> I'm trying something new. <laughs> it's very good. It's called... It's called long distance whispering. I picked it up from the telepathic bears. Uh, I, I turned back so, to the to the half orc. Yes, <laughs> he looks across the four of you, and he just. I promise you, we're a lot more capable on the ground. than we appear. <laughs> Orm sent you here to deal with that creepy fucking building down there, right? Uh, I suppose so. Yes. yes, yes, he did. Good. And he opens the door behind him and walks directly in. Motions for you to come along. Okay. Creepy fucking what? Building? This is a building. Why is there a building down? Is the building the shrine? There's a All right. We, we, go, we go in. <laughs> the inside of the shack reveals a walkway around a deep pit. Workers walk past you without a second glance, occasionally nodding to the massive half-orc. The perceptive among you may hear uh, individuals call him Burl. He guides you down a ramp into the earth, and you descend. The soft crust gives way to hard rock before your eyes, as uh, you adjust from the cool natural light of the winter morning to the firelight of the lanterns below. As stone rises above you, the cavern opens out into a massive cave with a network of ramps that you find yourself on, slowly sloping into a spiral staircase. At the base, you are taken from the central chamber to a tunnel that has been roped off. Burl kicks a post holding the rope aside and strides in. Hell yeah, Burl. Grabbing a lamp from the wall, the path is dark, illuminated only by the flickering lamplight. Yeah, we, uh... We found it a couple days ago. Uh, boss told us not to go in, so we didn't. I'm gonna lag behind for a second and put the uh -huh. put the uh, caution sign back. <laughs> okay, you, you you put the sign back up. Don't you worry. We will um, take care of the creepy ass building in the middle of the mine. Very good. Good. I can't work with that thing around here. Not the way it's. Oh, I got a bad vibe. What kind of vibe? Like, well, feel like you're going to die vibe, feel like someone's watching you vibe. Feel like there's something in there vibe. And this thing's mm. definitely been shut down here for a uh, long fucking time. Have you, like, heard anything? Heard? No. Seen? Yeah. Ooh, what have you seen? Yeah, you'll see it when we get there, but, uh, 
There's these fucking windows up top, and they keep, uh, there's light inside. Oh. Huh. I mean, magical light can burn for a while, I know that much, I'm not a fucking idiot, but, uh, uh, but shit can start living in there after a while. I heard stories. Beautiful. All right, well, you know, or Orm sends the best, mm-hmm. so. Have any of your miners gone missing? No, which is good. It was actually really f- fucking weird, because we found this thing, and we, you know, you'll see where the break was, where we found it, and then not, you know, 20 minutes later, we're just standing there looking at it with our thumbs up our asses, and a messenger comes from Orem and says, don't fucking touch it, put up a palisade and get out of there. So we did, and we did. Hmm. All right. Sounds right up our alley. Weird fucking alley, but, you know, have at it, man. You have no idea, Burl. You have just <laughs> no idea, my man. Not yet. <laughs> Weird alley is our collective middle name. Weird alley Don't, Yankovic. don't, don't th- <laughs> <laughs> Fucking ding, bro. Oh. Shit. Uh, as we go down, and right before we start to, to head farther, I'm gonna stop the boys. Mm-hmm. Um... I'm going to look at each of them and say, hey, I figured something out. I can do a new spell now. Okay. Oh, sweet. And, you know, it's not much, but it should help. And I'll touch yeah, break me off a piece. Mordecai, myself, and Zephyr, and I will cast Aid. Oh. So dope. your max hit point goes up by five, and you also get those five. Not concentration, and it will last for eight hours. Excellent. A little more invigorated. Yeah, it's I. I'm told it's like a, it's like a stamina boosting type thing that you can just go a little bit uh, farther, or you can, you know, just hold your ground that little extra longer. But I like to think of it as a really good cup of coffee. Yeah. Right, with some cinnamon in it. Hell yeah! So you can dunk your cinnamon hardtack in your coffee, and you get a nice jolt. It's great. <laughs> I don't know about all that, but th- th- thank you for that. That felt good. Um, it's been ages since I've had a good cinnamon heart attack. Oh, no. Sir. Oh, no. Oh, Burl. I, and I, I reach I reach up the extra foot <laughs> and clap my hand it. on his shoulder. Burl, I've got something for you. I'll go in my bag and I'll pull out. I like to think of the cinnamon heart attack as kind of like a... Uh, I grab the first one and I just kind of open it up and it like xylophones out like a really bad pamphlet, but it's food. <laughs> <laughs> food I was picturing pamphlet, it. Go on. Yeah. I was picturing it in like a crown royal bag. <laughs> <laughs> you have like a discreet velvet bag. Cinnamon royal. Cinnamon royal. That's its new name. Tac um, royal. Ooh. Okay. <laughs> Tac royal. Le cinnamon. I break him off a good chunk and say, "I got you." There you go. Mm. Thank you. Yeah. He crunches into it, and it's terrible. Oh. It's a, no, you're supposed to... You We're in the cave. <laughs> you're supposed the to crunch, it. and it echoes. Yeah. Crunch, crunch, crunch. Hey there, Chase from the Future, cutting in here. I just wanted to pop in and explain something a little bit more concisely than I do in the actual recording. Uh, so Amaraya Dejani is going to work a little bit differently mechanics wise going forward rather than being an npc that i pilot or a full-fledged character that one of the boys pilots uh, instead he has been uh, reduced down to something called an ally card this is something that uh, griffin has been piloting in our home game which has been working really well so Rather than having a full suite of abilities that somebody has to keep track of over the course of multiple recording sessions, he only has uh, two things that he can do at any given moment. Uh, he has one player that he is equipped to, which for obvious reasons is going to be Jackson. Uh, to Jackson, he is going to grant an additional 1d6 of damage. And uh, for the rest of the party, on uh, any party member's turn, uh, once per round, he can grant some Lay on Hands. He's got 30 points of that sitting in the hopper, and uh, those will regenerate over the course of a long rest, just like a traditional paladin. All right, uh, but that's about it. Just wanted to let you know how that was going to be changing. Back to the episode. Watch your step. 
Burl grumbles uh, without breaking his stride. The walls and ceiling seem to fall away as you enter into a massive cavern. The path is surrounded by a vast darkness on either side, and at the terminus, a building. One story tall, with walls that seem to glint in the faint lamplight. The structure is dotted with high windows, and faintly through them, just as Burl said, you see a flickering light from within. Does it look like a uh, like a building, like a two-story building, or like a castle, or like... You really wouldn't have much of a contemporaneous like style to compare it to the closest that i would compare it to would be like something like a greek construction okay um stone marble walls uh columns, columns yes. to say that there's not a lot of artistry put into it would be a misnomer yes it is absolutely very plain looking but even from this distance, you can tell that this building is perfect which is the first of many questions that you have this building, even from this distance, you can tell was built to be outside, not inside of a cave. Just... And yet here it is, you know, hundreds of feet below the earth in a massive cavern that seems almost tailor made for it. Hey, guys. Very weird. I don't I don't yeah. think this building should be in a cave. It should not. Do you know what building this is? Um, well, sorry. Is Burl still with us? He's still here? Yeah. All right, let's go. Look it out. Burl, you enjoy that cinnamon hardtack, and we'll uh, just maybe watch our uh, uh, watch the entrance there, make sure nobody comes yeah. in after us. Yeah, that's, yeah. uh, that's going to be my day. All right. All right. Good luck. Th Don't die. Thanks, Burl. And Thanks, he, Big B. He, he waves with one hand, and you hear a terrible crunch from down the hall. <sighs> More like I flinches reflexively. Feels like my <laughs> bones are breaking. Oh god! Uh, I heard my, I felt my tooth break. Uh, all right, let's go. All right, and uh, um, Amare, do you recognize this thing? This is this is definitely one of mine. I know this. Oh, this, you built this? I mean, not personally, but this is this was built to me. The names are foggy, but. The construction is... Maybe I'm speaking from a, a place of, uh, of prejudice, but I do think my followers built the best temples, and this construction <laughs> is pristine. It's perfect. It's the angles beautiful. are unmatched. It sings to me. Good enough for me. All right, let's... Uh, um, let's... I'll light up a produce flame mm. in my hands just to give us some more light. Sure. Uh, Burl did give you a lantern as well before he left. Um, Amareya Dejani has it now. Well, further up and further in, I guess. Let us go. Right. Sounds like a plan. Uh, all right, let's do this. Magic mm -hmm. eyes. Head on down. Okay. Is it here I heard a magic eyes? Yeah, magic eyes. There was the Okay. <laughs> Um, <laughs> faintly from the background. <laughs> <laughs> Magic eye. As you approach the door, you notice something actually kind of spectacular about the building. Well, two things, really. One, Amareya Dejani was right. Everything about this building is perfect. Even for its age, for it being down here for so long, it is incredibly intact. And Zephyr, you can tell not a drop of magic was spent on it. At least the exterior construction was all handmade. Not not a magic saw or gavel to be found. A glowing tear seeps out of my glowing eyes. <laughs> She's beautiful. <laughs> is it, how magical is it? Like, there's a lot then? Oh, this is very magical. Good. Good. Oh, the magic of hard work. My interior design brain is just singing everyone. Is that your is that your inner brain? Or uh, is that your you outer know, one? Everyone sort of has the different parts of the brain. For me the music and then the interior design. They're separate, but you know, they sort of share a general lobe together and then uh What are you talking about? I don't about? know. What does what does <laughs> loaf have to do with any of this? Not loaf lobe. Oh, <laughs> like right. from your ears, yes, that is. That's what, yeah, there right. we go. Beautiful. All right, let's All right. go. Everyone. Wait for me. <laughs> <laughs> 
The door is made of polished brass. It's molded with images of hammers and flame. It easily swings open at your touch. You open it to reveal the statue of a massive dragon. Dark gray stone inlaid with sanguine glass. The familiar draconic face of Amarea Dejani looks down at you from his perch with a pensive expression. Within his claws, he holds a single, massive hammer made from the exact same stone, lined in gold and silver. A hall rolls out for another hundred feet behind the statue as magical braziers above flicker with fires lit by magic in ages past. The hall is lined with statues and art. And though the braziers above light well, the end of the hall itself is in shadow, though a glint of metal seems to be visible even from this distance. The room itself is filthy. Soot crisscrosses the floor haphazardly, while bundles of robes seem to be littered about the room. Uh, well, I think... This is confirmed as yours. Yeah. Yep, that's, um... That's you, big guy. That's me. We we rode that out of a city. Ooh. Um, the the hammer, does it look like it's a part of the statue, or like it's seated into the statue? It is absolutely a part of the statue, uh, but Amareya Dejani is immediately drawn to it, and his hand is, like, placed on the head of the hammer. Is that what we came for? Can we take that with us? Well, it looks like we should try to take this whole place with us, because this isn't right. But can you take that with you? Not this incarnation of it, but this is here. This is the Hall of the Foremans. This is the Foreman's Sledge. Oh, so there's a... Wait, so, like, so that's fake you and your real you, so that's fake hammer, so real hammer... Should be somewhere in here, yes. Are we sure it's not that one? He takes his own hands in his hands and like t- tries to like pry them away no that that's a part of it that would be th- <laughs> i wish that would make things so much easier right now well you know sometimes the idiot's got to ask the dumb question and every even though stop clock is right three times a day yep you stared right into that skid good buddy <laughs> <laughs> all right i will uh Take the lead forward. Okay. If that's all right. All right. Um, go ahead and roll me a perception check. Happily. Ooh, baby. That'll be a 22. 22. 16 plus 6. Does anybody else want to roll perception, or are you guys kind of kind of looking at that statue uh, no, right I'll, now? Um, I'm, I'm moving once Mordecai starts going as well. Sure. Um, that's a 17, 13 plus 4. Okay. I want to roll investigation, but on the statue. Absolutely. Go for it. Two. <laughs> it is big, and it totally <laughs> breathes fire. It is big, big. It absolutely breathes fire. And what you are really drawn to about this is like you get really caught up in the weeds on this. But the glass work is phenomenal. They actually use the glass not to make the scales, but to outline where the scales would be. So you get this really nice model oh. gray and red effect. It's re- that's really cool. Again, spectacular craftsmanship. Hey, this one's real shiny. I like this one. Would you look at that rock? It's fantastic. Zephyr, with a 17, you are able to stop Mordecai just as he is about to step in one of these bundles of robes. Because you notice it's not a bundle of rope. It's a corpse. Uh, um, uh, hold. Um, mm. Look down. Yeah. Oh. Yes. With that knowledge, you look around again, and suddenly you see about... Ten desiccated corpses in robes of black and red. This took a very dark turn that I was not expecting. Okay. How did this happen? And Mordecai, as you, the reason that you didn't notice an obvious corpse that you were about to step into is because you started to hear a faint buzzing above you. And you look up. I kind of hold the flame above my head a little bit. Go ahead. I want you to roll me nature or arcana check, whichever is mm. better for you. They're both zero. Oh. I was not the most studious druid. Oh. I'll still take a nat 19. Hey, that'll do it. Uh, You have heard about these things before. Every so often, 
something can end up being brought forth from magical light when it is left to burn for too long. And these have been left burning for far too long. As three clouds of candle mites emerge from these braziers. Uh, Let's roll initiative. Oh, hey, uh, oh no, that was that was trash. Trash rolls. Uh, I'll take a nice middle of the road. 17. Uh, 17 for Jackson. And what'd you get, Zephyr? 8. Okay. And a twelve. Twelve. So if you don't if you don't like fighting these things, you can actually thank Christina because she was the, the brain mother of them. Oh, Christina. Hoekstra, what have you done to us? Thank you for this. Thanks, I hate it. <laughs> they look like a cross between a firefly and a fairy from Zelda. Gotcha. Jackson, we're gonna start with you. Oh wow, that was quick. Okay. Are they at our level? They're a little bit above you. You can hold your action if you want to wait for them to get down here. If you want to try and pop off a spell, you could do that too. But you see three clouds of them starting to give them the book, starting to descend. Can I get in, like in between two of them, or maybe even three of them? They are still above you. It's kind of hard. Like they haven't gotten down to ground level yet. If you wanted to hold your action until after their turn, which is next, that would be a reasonable thing to want. Well, then, then here's what I'm going to do, actually, because okay. I'm just going to drop my initiative to 13. Uh, So, yeah, the flavors. Uh, I can't reach that. Hold on. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Hold on. All right. Come on. And Come on. Each of you is going to get a, uh, a group of these bad boys on you. So that is going to be, we will start with Jackson. Does a 19 hit your AC? Yes. Not bad. Two fire damage. Okay, I will take my two fire damage. Mordecai. Nat one, so fail. Woo! Zephyr. And 18. Which for these guys is a crit. Oh, no. Whoa! Crit on 18? That's cruel. That's Christina's nastiness. <laughs> That was her idea. I was like, oh, that's brilliant. I'm I'm keeping it. Uh, Zephyr, that is seven fire damage for you. Well, that's butts. Butts indeed. All right, Jackson, it's that, your turn. Now, those, those five hit points were max, not temp. So we'll yeah. restore up to it. Oh, nice. For eight hours. That's eight. Dude. Yeah, that's eight. All right, now it's my turn. Um, yes. I'm going to slice some mites. Yeah. So I'm going to do some slicing. A little bit yeah. of Dyson, and I'm just going to mm -hmm. attack the one in front of me. Go for it. Because it's right there. All right. First attack is a... an 11. Nope. All righty. Swing and a miss. I cut through the mites, and there are none home. Second attack yep. is a 16. I am, That'll I am rolling like crap. Don't worry. So am I. All right. So that's <laughs> going to be... You just crit Zephyr. Shut up. <laughs> I just rolled na two natural ones for damage, so that's a grand total of eight points of Jackson damage and one point of Amarea damage. So okay. nine damage total. Two attacks, nine damage. Not the greatest thing I've ever done. Not excellent. Honestly, it doesn't look good. These things are not terribly sturdy. Cool. So then I'll just kind of take a few steps back, get in front of Amarea, and take mm -hmm. parry stance. So okay. my AC is 19 now. Perfect. All right, uh, Mordecai, your turn. All right, I'm going to uh, kind of skid back away from these things. So mm -hmm. I'll take my attack of opportunity if you'd like. Absolutely. I'll take I'll take a little bit of fire damage for a cool thing. Okay, uh, that is going to be uh, 14 to hit. I miss it. All right, then you get this 15. for free. Uh, so as I skid away and kind of uh, back on my heels... Um, I will grip the entirety of my druid necklace in my hand and uh, will partially shift mm -hmm. um, and howl as I cast Moonbeam yeah. straight down on top of this little swarm of mites. Do it. So they make a constitution saving throw. Okay. DC 15. Kill these assholes. 13. All right. And that is going to be... ooh. Uh, 15 points of radiant damage. Ooh, not the true one. They disintegrate. Ooh. They're dead, though. They dead, though. 
So there's just a wolf howl that kind of echoes through the room a little bit as this pillar of light emerges from the ceiling and just comes streaking down on this swarm. Yeah, the swarm poofs out of existence. Uh, Zephyr, Um, you're up. I'm not in a good position, um, so I'm going to um, sort of start like I'm about to run out, um, cast a second level armor of Agathis on myself that starts okay. to to shroud me as I'm going to leave, and I'm gonna try to get the fuck out of there. Okay, uh, you are going to take an opportunity that's, attack. That's the idea. I had a feeling it might be. However, it is uh, not going to do much. That's only a ten. All right, that does not hit me, and I still have armor of Agathis up. So nice, excellent. Um, that takes us to the natural one that I rolled for initiative. You all see very plainly from the biggest brazier a single mote of light, probably about like a foot and a half, two feet tall, rise up and hit one of these bodies. And it arises. Oh. And it turns and looks at you. It's desiccated face is cracked with fire leaking out of it it's dead and empty eyes alive with flame <sighs> and it reaches to its belt and pulls a sword and that is its turn who is it looking at all of you it's at like oh, okay. yeah down the hall a little ways the plural the you. royal yes. you yes I'm really glad I cast Moonbeam just now. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that is going to take us back to the mic. Let's take a look here on Jackson. Let's see here. 14's not going to cut it. Nope. The mites are going to pursue Zephyr and try and hit him again. 13. That is my AC. All right. Bum, ba -dum. Six fire damage to and you. You'll take six ice. All right. Uh, 10, isn't it? So I got I pretty much make that bank of temp hit points, and so whatever's shaved off of that is dealt back until my AC. I is always thought it through. was. I was uh, no. Anytime they hit you, they take the full damage. So long as you have that temp HP up, if a creature hits you with a melee attack while you have these hit points, the creature takes five cold damage. Well, yeah, I have it upcasted, but so upcast to ten. But if a creature hits you while you have these hit points, they take right, ten cold that, damage. That's fine with me. And that's going to be really fine with you, because uh, as they attack you, they all freeze and fall to the ground and shatter. Excellent. These things are not beefy. There you go. Jackson, back to you. All uh, right. So there that's is one more might swarm in front of me. Yes. Okay. They are dead now. <laughs> I guess I should roll for it. Typically, uh, it, you know... I will slice them dead. Mm -hmm. That is a natural 20. Yeah. Um, you... Oh, 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 Eviscerate over. this individual might. <laughs> you look it at... It is the ultimate, mm -hmm. the ultimate imprecision weaponry. You cut its wings off? <laughs> With the tip of the scythe, I cut its wings off. It falls to the ground and vanishes even before it hits. Cool, and then I'm going to turn and run at the thing that just stood up. Absolutely, you run at the Cinder Knight. Oh. Uh-oh. And I will... No, I'm not going to blow anything. I will just roll my second attack. 20-something. Yeah, that'll do it. Great. And use my Amorea damage. That's better. That is going to be 17. 17 damage. All right. Yeah. It is magical slashing. Okay. If that means anything. Yep. That does make a difference. And then I will uh, take parry stance and just wait for it to come at me. Yes. Come at me. Come at me, bro. Come at me, former priest of my order that I've kind of joined that I'm restarting that has been dead for hundreds of thousands of years old. Come at me. Yeah. What he said. Mordecai, your turn. I... I'm going to use my uh, action to reposition my moonbeam so that it is engulfing the knight. It's a five foot radius cylinder, so I imagine I can kind of angle it so I'm getting the knight but not Jackson. It's not the hu huge zone. 
Um, so a constitution saving throw, okay. please. A 15. Uh, that is the DC, so he'll take half damage. 13 reduced to 6 radiant. Um, f- for for what it's worth, if he's a shape changer, he has to make his save with disadvantage. Just throw Fair enough, there. not a shape changer, you did see it possess a thing. Just saying, fair Didn't enough. Know. Um, and then for my bonus action, nothing I have has reach. Except for the octopus, but I'm not in water. <laughs> <laughs> I can hold my breath for an hour. <laughs> no, I'm not going to do that here. Um, that would be silly. I don't really have any bonus action stuff, so I guess I'm just going to... kind of get near Jackson, maybe like ten feet behind him, and I'm going to pull the javelin and just be ready. Sounds good. Zephyr, you're up. Um, How far is the, the Cinder Knight? Uh, he is about... He's about halfway down the hall, so about 50 feet away from the entrance. Okay. Um, I sort of take off um, to the point where I am about 20 feet from him. Okay. And I, I think I'm going to huck an axe at him. Huck an axe at him! <laughs> You axe hucker. I know, right? That's what they called me back at mall school. That was a bad... I don't know. I'm sorry. (laughs) Zach Rob, ladies and gentlemen. That's a dirty 20 to hit. Take a bow. Um, Beer all week. Yeah, dirty 20 to hit, um, and I'm going to put a psychic blades on there. Ooh. Ah. Because I haven't used that yet. Okay. I see you. So 20 will do it. So what's the damage? Ooh, that was a lot. That's like three out of four sixes there. That's nice. Nice. That would be what? Six slashing plus. Numbers are hard. 16. Uh, psychic. 22. Very nice. No, sorry. Su- uh, seven slashing. I didn't add the one on there. 23. Um, but yeah, so, um, he, uh, draws his hand axe and kind of gives a, <whistles> as it sort of heats up mm-hmm. with, with bardic energy as he hucks this axe and it, Whips over uh, Jackson's shoulder and clobbers the dude right in, right in the chest. Okay, very nice. He so, got, he gets axed. You this guy takes the axe in the chest, and he looks down, and he looks up at all of you, and with his bonus action, he snaps his fingers, and another moat of candle mites emerges from one of the braziers, and will go on the candle mite initiative. Uh, and with his attacks, he is going to be attacking the single threat in immediately in front of him, which is Jackson. What's up? Uh, Jackson, I'm going to imagine a 27 will hit. Yes. And I imagine 11 won't. Correct. Okay, uh, the 27 is going to deal 15 damage. Alrighty, I'll take that. A uh, quick point of order, just so we know. I did Moonbeam a little wrong. Okay. It's supposed to proc on the start of the creature's turn. Oh, okay. So we'll just consider that for this round. I knew, I knew that. I've had Moonbeam, and I make that same yeah. mistake every single time I use it, too. Because that's how you think it works. Right. Because <laughs> right? yeah. that's how spells work, is you do a thing and then you get damage. And something happens, yeah. <laughs> you know, causation. Right. Um, all right. Uh, but you have so on on the start of his next turn, he if he's if he doesn't move out of the beam, he'll mm-hmm. make a saving throw. Absolutely. And now the uh, mites are going to go, and they're going to attack Zephyr because he is by himself. And uh, Zephyr, sixteen to hit. Uh, that will hit. Okay, and that is going to be. Let's take a look here. Six more fire damage, and you still have armor of Agathus up, don't you? I do. And so they burst into ice and disintegrate. <laughs> <laughs> Stupid bugs. You're a bug zapper. Yeah. A, 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 a bug freezer. Sorry, yes. Same basic principle. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Six, six of one, half dozen of the other. Uh, Jackson, you're up. 
I will stare down this thing in front of me. Can I get a general sense of cutting into it? Did it look like it did a lot? Uh, like, we squished the bugs really easily. Yeah. Does this thing look super hefty? Or? This thing does not look happy, but you know it likely has more tricks up its sleeve. This thing wasn't in a body a few minutes ago. It might not have to be in a body if it doesn't want to be. Okay, I will just use my action and attack. Okay, go for it. Twice. First attack is a 22. 22, that'll hit. Second is... Oh, that's a natural 19, so that's going to hit. That's a lot. All right, first attack, 20 damage. Okay. Adding an Amorea. Second attack is not 20. Uh, 11, so 31 total. Okay, excellent. Nice. Uh, so you hack into this thing, and the body falls away. However, the fire... That was outlining the body. That was seemed to be peeking through the craps and the desiccation. The fire stands there. Well, that's that's just rude. Mm-hmm. It is, in fact. You're supposed to fall over. <laughs> Amorea, it's not falling over. Can you... I Look, I was right in there with you. I stabbed it. I think that... Okay, well... Mordecai, you're out. Uh, I'll take... I, I, I will take parry stance. Okay. With my moonbeam still in place, still focusing on that, still partially shifted, mm -hmm. I'm going to drop my javelin and extend out the former uh, scimitar tattoo arm and cast Frostbite. All right, go for it. Hey. Uh, I'll need a con save from the little fireball. <laughs> that's not going to cut it. That's a nine. Excellent. It's going to take, ooh, that's pretty good, uh, nine points of cold damage. Okay. And it has disadvantage on its next attack roll. Very good. Um, and then I'm going to back up just a little bit, take my my trademark middle ground between Zephyr and Jackson, okay. and uh, just be on standby. Absolutely. Um, that will take us to Zephyr. I haven't witch bolted anything in a bit. Not witch bolted, uh, Eldritch Blast anything for a while. Yeah, go for it. Eldritch Blast. Eldritch Blast. Eldritch Blast. Yes. <laughs> that is a 17 and an 18 to hit. Okay, um, both of those. Uh, yep, both of those will do it. It's going to be 20 total force damage. Okay, awesome. <laughs> uh, this thing is not looking good. So, Start of its turn, I'll need a con save for Moonbeam. Yes, it will. All right. Moon DC 15. Not gonna cut it. Yeah, here comes 2d10 radiant. Uh, that'll be 13 radiant. Oh. Alright, this thing is looking bad right now. Okay. I flip it off. <laughs> Whoa, that is not our IP, okay? <laughs> I give it the bird. We've met them only at a party once, okay? The Birds of Prey would absolutely embark on a series of lawsuits to protect their trademark. <laughs> to protect Whoa, flipping for damn off sure. people. Sorry. Sorry. By one Ragnar oh, oh, first sorry. and foremost. I'm taking notes now. <laughs> <laughs> this thing runs to another bundle and mm -hmm. hops in and it stands up again. It looks much less armored this time, but it's got a fresh suit. Well, that's all right. I'll just kind of take my time and walk over to it and just kind of heft the scythe. You know, we can keep playing whack-a-mole, but are you done? No? Okay. I slice at it. Okay. Slice away. 27? Uh, yeah, I'll do it. And 19? Uh, yep, that'll do it. All righty. Damage, 17 and 13, so 30 total. And that's just enough to take down the new body. <laughs> this, is, this is so frustrating. <laughs> All right. Uh, yeah, the, no sooner does this new, much less hefty body arise than Jackson. You just come in behind it and hack it in two. This thing falls down and you are left staring at this flickering ball of light which seems to have a skeletal structure emerging from it. Mordecai, you're up. Uh I don't really have anything else fancy. I think I'm just going to reposition the moonbeam. Okay, that that's enough. Look. 
I'm just gonna reposition the moonbeam and I'll uh, sling a level one healing word at Zephyr. That's nice. Hey, bud, you're doing great. Um, take uh, six HP back. Oh, nice. I think that doesn't quite get me to full, but I'm very close. <laughs> oh. Thank you. And it, now it's your turn, Zephyr. Oh, rad. So it's in, in fire form again? Yes. Or? Cool. Yeah, let's just uh, light it up a couple more times. Go for it. See if, see if we can take this fucker out. Uh, that is a 22 and a 19 to hit. Yep. I'm assuming both will do the job. 26, force damage total. You obliterate this thing. Your your spiraling <laughs> dragons emerge from your cool goth kid ring and spiral around <laughs> and hit this thing square in the chest if it had a chest. Uh, and the lights flicker <laughs> out and dissipate. Light them up. Up, up. I'm on fire. Thanks for the backup, boys. <laughs> Got you, bud. Yeah, and we long distance high five. Yeah! I, I go and I, I retrieve my axe from the one dead body. Amareya Dejani is looking very distraught. Um, Amareya, should we, uh, quiet the forges for a while? I, I, I don't, I don't know. I don't, I've never seen anything like that before. This is... Hold on, there's got to be. And he he wanders around for a moment, and he finds a, a, a statue over here, and he touches something behind a statue, and the lights go off, and then turn back on. All right, that, sh- that should fix it for the time being. Did he just factory reset the forges? I, <laughs> it, just the brazers up there. The forges, I don't know what's going on with the forges. The actual forge, though, that is, that is beneath. That is my old workshop. And I would be lying if I said I wasn't looking forward to getting down there. Um, should we do something for these bodies? Um, so... I will do something for all of them as soon as we clear this place. We are what, not What safe. is the robe? What is it? Is that yours? Oh, yes. You? This is... These were my people. Well, I, I guess my thought is if we can find a way to peacefully put them down then that is less skin suits for things to wear I guess. There's really not a good way to dispose of them at this moment if we can get to the fires we can quell them keep them at least we can regain this temple we can put them all to rest alright well then let's move quickly let's Thank you for joining us here on Another Path. You can find our website and merch store at anotherpathpodcast.com, on Twitter at Another Path Pod, and our network at ghostlightmedia.net. You can support our efforts by donating at patreon.com slash another path. A special thanks to our donor Nathan N. Or by giving us a rating and review over on Apple Podcasts or whatever podcatcher will let you. You can also find me on Twitter at TQ Loudly. Ryan at Ryan underscore Albrecht. Griffin at Griff Cold. And Zach at that guy, Zach Rob. We'll be back in two weeks with a new episode. And until then, remember to turn off the lights before you leave a room. 